All right, talking this week about company culture. Uh, it's sort of this nebulous kind of thing that we talk a lot in leadership and management circles as being really important, key to success. You know, you hear those quotes like, culture eats strategy for breakfast. I think I want to say a Peter Drucker quote that one. And well, true. And that's exactly what I've seen as well. It's still um, is a little nebulous. Like it's a little bit like, okay, but what, what are we really talking about here? Here's the deal. Here's the best definition that I've been able to come up with for, for company culture that I use, um, because I don't really agree with and love all the other ones I've seen out there. Company culture is simply this, the things we reward, the things we tolerate and the things we punish. That's it. As simple as that. Simple, but not easy, because then you start to get into, well, but does a culture not exist independent of the leader? Yes, it does. Um, you know, you see these company uh, culture change programs run by someone in HR and they're never successful. So what's, what's going on here? Here's the thing. Well, culture is absolutely about a group of people. The leader has a huge impact on that culture, much bigger than any individual team member. So while you can't 100% have control over your company culture, you absolutely have more influence on it than anyone else in the team and in the company. So on that note, I want to talk to you a little bit about when you think about your culture and how you want people to be when they show up, what you want people to be rewarding, punishing, and tolerating in terms of how we behave with each other. Um, there's really five things that I want you to think about that you as a leader can influence and impact that will alter and change the culture. So number one, true diagnostics. So this is, we often have an idea of what we think our culture is. We're probably wrong. You need to get some useful data from people who um, are living in the culture, in the team, who can um, give you some insight into what it's really like. What is really like being part of this team, part of this company? Because I guarantee you there are things that you're not aware of um, that are just the way it is in this team. Things that you didn't even start, things that you did not necessarily intend to be the case is probably happening. So this is usually, to be honest, you know, the best data is probably going to come from a third party consultant or um, person. If you have an internal HR person, they can usually be unbiased enough to do this for you as well, but, but really start understanding what the culture actually is. So you know what your baseline is to be able to change. Number two on the list, walk the walk. Here's the deal. If you say, if I sit with you as an outsider and say like, what's the, what's one of the most important benchmarks of the culture here? And you say respect, respect for everyone. That's huge. And then if you disrespect people in meetings, if you gossip about people behind their back, if you're making fun of people and being disrespectful, if you see someone doing those behaviors and you tolerate it and let it happen, then you're not, that's not part of your culture actually. Respect is not part of your culture. You don't get to say that. So you either have to give up on respect being a benchmark of your culture, or you need to start acting differently. Those are your two choices. So walk the walk. And, and it's definitely one of the harder parts of leadership, but it's, um, yeah, it's not a one that's up for debate. So number two, walk the walk. Number three around impacting the culture of your team and your company put your money where your mouth is. So similar to behavior, similar to if you say respect is important and then you are disrespectful to team members, you don't get to say respect is part of the culture. Same with where you put your money. If you say, um, you know, our team members, um, developing our team members and growing our skills is key to how we are. And you have $0 in the budget, $0 or pounds or whatever in the budget for team member training uh, and you never let people take days off to go and do workshops or conferences, then that's not important to you. You know what the, I, I'm sort of doing a lot of quotes in this video, but what the, the Joe Biden quote is, don't tell me what you value, show me your budget and I'll tell you what you value. Something like that. Same idea here. You need to, if, if I'm going to understand someone's culture, I need to see their budget. 
What are you earmarking money on? What are you spending money on? Those are the things that are part of your culture. Those are the things you value and reward. And if that's not what you intended, then you need to change the budget, change what you spend your money on, change what you invest in, um, to be able to shift some of these cultural, uh, behaviors that you see. Okay. Number four on the list, ask for ideas and input. Yes, of course, as the leader, you have a huge amount of impact and influence on the culture, but it's still about the other people in the team, the other people in the company. Ask, find out what people want to see, find out what would make people's lives easier coming into work, understand, um, where people are struggling with the way things go around here. You know, I worked at an organization once where, um, being able to say, well, that's just not the way we've done things was, was a valid reason to say no to something. And I could never, I could never wrap my head around that. And it always made, I always found it really difficult working in that team because that was, that was a common and accepted answer, um, to not doing something. So look at, understand what's going on, what's frustrating your team, what's maybe being tolerated and rewarded that you're not aware of. Um, that maybe does need to be shifted and you need to take some responsibility of. So that's number four. And the last thing on the list here, number five, when it comes to you impacting and sort of shifting this culture, I call it the seven times rule. Your team members have to hear, see, be told something seven times before it starts to sink in. So if you want there to be a shift in the way you work together in what people value, what people reward, punish, and tolerate. It's not like you put up, like do a team meeting and then put up a colorful poster and then you're done. No, that's like scratching the surface. You have to be a dripping tap message. Like every time you interact with your team, every time you interact with other people, there is this constant regular drumbeat messaging of the way things work around here. If you want to see change, you have to be patient and you have to over communicate, over communicate, like to the point where it's probably annoying that you talk about it to that frequency. That's what you have to do to start just to even start seeing those shifts. Drumbeat messaging, communicate, communicate, communicate seven times before they even noticed you've said it. That's what you have to keep in mind. Okay. Hope that helps give you a couple insights and ideas around culture, your impact, and some ways you can start to shift the culture in your team and company if that's something that needs to happen. Uh, Leading a team is hard. Go easy on yourself. If you do want some other resources and free stuff, head over to lightupwork.com. There's some stuff over there for you that you uh, might make your life a little easier, hopefully. Um, Drop some comments here, get in touch, and good luck with it all.